Here we have data for the amount of avocados sold in Los Angeles given the price on that particular day. My question is, if we sold avocados for $2, how many avocados would we sell on that particular day? With our current data, we could create lines in order to predict how many avocados would be sold at $2. But what exactly would the line look like? You could reasonably say it could be any of these lines that I'm showing right now. So how do we know which line is best? This is where we use machine learning, specifically regression. Also, as this video goes on, I will show snippets of code like this so you can make your own version of what I am showing on screen. Also in the description, there's a Python file with all of the code shown in this video and also more comments to give more clarity. This specific bit of code is just importing the data into our Python code. So now we can move on to how we are going to create these lines. We can represent one of these lines as a mathematical function where f of x is our output, x is our input, and w0 and w1 are weights. In our specific case, x is the price of an avocado and y is the amount of avocados sold. The weights are going to be determined by our algorithm in order to create a line that fits our data. However, we do not know if a straight line is the best representation for our data. So we can use different order polynomials like a quadratic, a cubic, a quartic, or any order polynomial, and we will have to keep that in mind throughout the video. Here's a snippet of code of how I'm representing these different types of functions. Now I've been saying that different lines represent our data better than other lines, but how do we know exactly if one line is representing our data better than another line? This is where we use the square error function. All the square error function does is take the distance from each point to the prediction line, then it squares that distance and adds the square distance for every single point. This will then give us an error number that we can use to determine how good a prediction line is. As you can see here, the red line is a better approximation than the green line since it has a lower error. And now here is the square error function just written in mathematical notation and the code for how to make the square error function. Now we need to know how to find the weights for the functions. That way we can actually make the lines in order to compare them. In order to get the weights, we use what is called the normal function. It looks a bit scary, but I promise it's not so bad. Theta represents the weights that the function creates. X is a bit more complicated. X is the matrix of our features, which in our case is the prices of avocados. Each column of X is all of our prices raised to a power, depending on what order we want our line to be. You always start with the first column being to the power of zero. Then the next column, you take all our prices raised to the power of one. That would be all you needed if you wanted a linear polynomial line. However, you can keep going if you want higher order polynomial lines. Like for a quadratic, you would use the first three columns. And for a cubic, you would use the first four columns and so on. Now Y is just the output data, which in our case is the amount of avocados sold in millions. And now those are all of our variables. Now lastly, this capital T just means to transpose the matrix, which is a way of rotating the matrix like this. And if you want more information on it, I would search for some resources online because in our case, just using NumPy makes this very easy. So I'm not going to get into it too much. Now, finally, here's the code for solving the function. Now that is all the code needed to create some predictions. Here let's compare some of the different order polynomials and take a look at the error value to see which functions tend to be doing better. As you can see, the last function had the smallest error, which is our quartic function. So does that mean the quartic function is the best representation of our model? This is where we run into the problem of overfitting. Overfitting is where our model is too fit for our current data that it's going to make inaccurate predictions for the future. A good analogy I found on Reddit is that overfitting is like preparing for an exam by memorizing every single question on a previous exam and then expecting the next exam to be the exact same. In order to prevent this, we do something called k-fold cross-validation, which just means to separate our data into k groups, where one of the groups is our testing data, and the rest of the groups are training data. So we will use the training data to make our model, and then use our testing data 
to test the model and see how well it does at predicting the testing data value. In our case, we're going to use five groups. So it's five fold cross validation. And because our data is not that much, we can make every group a testing group once. Now we can compare these tests and see which model is able to predict the data best. Now here is a visualization of these tests. The orange points are the test and the white points are the training data. And you can pay attention to the error to see what type of function is doing good on certain tests and which ones are doing bad on certain tests. Now the code for this is pretty long, so I would just recommend going to the description and downloading the code and maybe copy pasting it from there. But now we can make a table of all our results to see which type of function represents our data best. As you can see, the function with the lowest average error on the test is the quadratic function, which indicates that the quadratic function is probably the best model for this specific data. Here's a snippet of code I used to make this table. And now that we know the quadratic model is the best model for our data, we can now make our prediction on how many avocados would be sold in Los Angeles if we made avocados $2 on that day. The answer turns out to be 1.91 million avocados sold, which is a lot of avocados. And here's the final bit of code. Okay, so I just looked at the data set again. And when I say millions of avocados, what I should have been saying was millions of pounds of avocados. Uh, a bit of a mix up, but it doesn't change the video in any way. And if you liked the video, I would appreciate some feedback or subscribing or anything. Uh, this video did take a lot of time, longer than expected because my power went out for a couple days. So any sort of support would be appreciated. Thank you.